Okay, so we just had another briefing. Again, it started raining as soon as we were standing in line. Talking about the battle, blah, blah, blah stuff. After that, we had to get in line to get a stamp. And after that, we had to get in line again to get a small present, so let me see what it is. Oh, we have penny waffle. Oh, that's nice. So we have little waffles, we have chocolate. Wow, it's like a whole pack of candy and very, very nice stuff. Nice. I like that. I'm gonna take this one right now. Nice, perfect. Have a safe flight. So they told us the reenactment was about to begin. The public was already waiting, so I placed my cameras in a well-hidden position and we started acting like we were just two German soldiers talking to each other. We were standing here for a very long time before something even happened. And of course, it started raining too. Later, we finally started to see some action. Unfortunately, this isn't in camera view because obviously I couldn't film during the reenactment. So what happened was the pilot we saw earlier acted like he crashed his plane a little bit further down the road. He was captured by Germans and was taken by car to the camp. In the corner of the screen captured by my GoPro camera, you can see the motorcycle and the car entering the camp with the captured pilot. They were questioning him. Again, this all happened out of camera view. Here you can see the motorcycle leaving the camp again. And that right there are two confused faces. This was an unexpected accidental discharge of one of the explosives. Notice how the big chunks of mud are coming down everywhere, hitting the MG box that my camera was in. So yes, that wasn't planned. That's why we were a little bit confused. Anyways, let's just continue. Yes, we are officially under attack. And now we wait for the infantry to approach. 
And this took a very long time. And it was raining extremely bad. Yes, it really took long. Bert was smart. He decided to hide under the trees to stay more dry. I, however, stayed in my position, so rain it was for me. A lot of rain. So much that I'd even knocked my camera over. Time to adjust the camera. It was getting wet, and it's not a cheap camera. Time to adjust it again. So. So, good. Now it's time for our cannon to shoot back. We started to notice movement in the distance. For now, all I was doing was laying in the rain and enjoying the artillery sounds. Fire! An explosion nearby. It took really long, so let me skip a bit further so we can see some more action. After a long time waiting, the infantry approached. Ready for battle. Shot in the head. Historically correct. Yes, I was killed. Now, I have to play dead for the rest of the reenactment. But let me tell you, that's harder than it looks. In the meantime, the battle rages on. Nice. Laying soaking wet in the grass on top of your own equipment, which is pushing your guts away, listening to the sounds of gunfire. Fantastic. I was laying here for a very long time. Let's get forward. In the right corner of the screen, you can see the American troops entering the camp. Let's skip forward again. Here you can see an M20 armored car rolling up. As you can see, I moved a bit. I couldn't really see, but I heard an engine. Then, the infantry was clearing our position. Yeah, I'm dead. Here, one of the GIs knocks over my camera. So, this is the view now. We have to switch to the GoPro footage. After a while, they moved up. And I stayed there again for another couple years.
finally, after actually almost dying, someone came to tell me that the battle was over. And there's Bird again. I was cleaning my camera and I noticed that the M20 was trying to get up the hill. It was a nice shot and I decided to film that. I continued cleaning. And then I noticed that the M20 was coming, so I wanted to film one final shot. Yep, and then that happened. They decided to drive so close to our position that they damaged my MG42. Notice how the top cover completely bends. That right there is not good. From another angle, you can see that it's not only the MG42 that they hit. They also knocked over one of my MG boxes. Yes, I was shocked. They literally drove through our position and they did notice us before when they drove by earlier. Here, I go tell the news to the organizer of the German reenactment group. We stopped the vehicle and they wanted to see the MG. After showing them the MG42, we agreed to meet at the museum, where the organization of this event is based. In the background, you can see them driving to that location. Well, this is pretty shit. So they drove over my MG42. So I have to fix something with... Uh... <sighs> I don't know. <sighs> so as you can see behind me, they're also selling stuff here. Um, but for me, the fun is kind of over right now because my... MG42 is broken, which is a, a really, really big bummer. It really, really sucks. I didn't expect them to just drive over it. I mean, could have been a person there, you know, that just drove over it. I have to get it fixed somehow. But the damage has been done already. All right, so I actually did film more over there, but I decided it was just better to stop the footage from that place and talk to you like this because that is a little bit easier right now. First of all, when I came there and showed them the MG42, they were like, hmm, did it really happen? Like I'm lying or something. They started talking to me like, like, like it wasn't true that it happened, that it didn't happen. Uh, so they were like, okay, let's, let, let's meet up at the front where the museum is, where the organization is based. Um, so we went there, me and, me and Bert went, went there and um, we started talking to them. This was our position. We were there from the start. And at the moment they drove, past, first of all, I didn't even know that, the, that there were vehicles coming past this, this way because it's not really a road or anything. But anyway, they decided to drive past it. There was enough room on the other side to just go around us. They actually saw us laying there when they drove past us uh, before that. So they knew we were there and I never moved the MG42. It was there all the time. So there's absolutely no excuse. Anyway, so we went there and uh, they were like, did it really happen? Because if it didn't happen and you're saying that it, that it happened, then you're gonna be in trouble and stuff like this. And they were really, really, really weird. They were acting like we were in the wrong, even though they definitely were the ones who made the mistake. And yes, people can make mistakes, you know, it happens. But the way I've been treated by them and by the organization is absolutely disgusting. I'm disgusted by the way this so-called organization operates or let's say doesn't operate and this American reenactment group, the lack of respect 
and the lack of responsibility, the childish way of communication, the immature way of of, of, of not responding to me. I want to say so much right now in one video that it's possibly not really clear exactly what happened. That's why I think it's a good idea to actually make a separate video only about what happened here to make everything more clear. Anyway, we we came there and, and they started acting like we were wrong and stuff. They even dared to say to me that there was no one near the MG42, which is a total lie. You can definitely see me and Bert were right, were right next to the MG. We were there and they said, you should not leave your weapon behind. You should take care of it and look at it at all times. We were literally there. Who expects that they just drive over it? Come on. They even said to me, if you see that something is getting hit, then take it away really quick. You want me to push my hand in front of this vehicle while the driving right there I'm not gonna risk my life where's the common sense you really think I'm gonna put my hand under this big wheel just to take this MG away no come on use your brain that's not how it works so I showed the MG to them and first of all like I said they were acting like we were lying and uh, and they started with a couple people they started pushing on the top cover without asking my permission they were just pushing on the top cover and you could easily damage it more like that I wanted to keep it like this because if it's you know an insurance thing then you shouldn't do anything with the thing that has been damaged you, you just keep your hands off it's my property don't push this cover okay don't just keep your hands off it don't touch it but anyway they decided to push on the top cover to close because it was it was wide open it didn't close anymore they decided to to push on it with three people at the same time and they closed it and you know what they said problem solved that made me so mad it's oh my god that made me so mad problem solved oh yes it's closed this the, the problem is solved a lot more was damaged here's my mg42 the first thing we notice is the sling that's broken as you can see it's fresh and it's been ripped off from right over there. Then we have, this is what I noticed. That right there, this part is definitely bent. This should not be standing up like that. It should be straight. It should not be standing up like that. And that happened, of course, when this was like that and it was just pushed all the way over there. Also, we have some scratches right here on the top. It might be hard to see on the camera, but right there, uh, we have some pretty deep scratches, could have been worse, but still, it's post-war damage and the bluing right there is completely gone. That happened because this hit that part right there and it was completely pushed that way, which is of course also bad for this right here. I still have to check if this is bent or not. They also said to me, can't you just replace the top cover? Like seriously, this right here is a number. Okay, a serial number which matches with this weapon. This number, 1700, is very important and this particular number is on the papers, of course. I cannot change that. I, I'm not allowed to change the top cover and just change the number, the serial number. Come on, that's common sense. So as you can see, it doesn't close anymore. First, it was standing all the way like this. But because they decided to all push on it and try to close it with force, they were like, oh, it closes again, problem solved. Come on, seriously. So if it closes again, it's okay? Normally, this closes all the way, and the only thing you have to do is this, and then it will close. I will show you that later with the other MG42. Also something that is not good is the buttstock right here. Take a look at this. This is not okay. So there are parts definitely bent. This is also stuck all the time, which was not like this before. This this this, isn't, this wasn't like this before. So, it is damaged, okay? And normally, if you're a man, you would take responsibility for your actions and you would fix the problem. But that's not the case. So, it's getting kind of personal right now. The way they are handling the situation is extremely childish, and I'm really mad. Especially the way they are treating me is the thing I'm most mad about. They're treating me like it was my fault. And that's something that they should not do. Okay, so the one in the back is the one uh, that's damaged. And this is another one. The first thing you notice is this. There should not be contact with the site and the top cover, right? That should not be happening right there. That is because this part right there, that, 
is bent. That should be straight, as you can see. It should not be standing up like it does right there. So that's bent. Um, normally, if you close the top cover, I can already feel that it's touching something here. It will close. See? It will normally close. Now I, I'm tapping it. It's not closing. Look. This is what should happen. It would just be like that. And the only thing you should do is do this. All right? So they, right there, were just pushing on it like that. Three people were pushing on the top cover. And they closed it. And they said, problem solved. How stupid are you? This is normally how it would function. Just use your thumb, push it, and it opens up. Really simple. See? It closes all the way. That's how it normally would close. And if you open it up, it stays there. This one won't close. And if you open it up, it touches the site, which is damaging the top cover. Luckily, it seems like the site is not damaged. I'm really happy about that. The bluing is damaged. Uh, by the way, these are both MG42s. They are not 53s or anything. They are both MG42s. This one is stuck all the time as well, right here, which is also not normal. It should not be stuck. It should be like this. And if I put this one like that, it's going to be like this and it's going to be stuck. See? So yeah, we obviously have a problem. I cannot believe these people. Okay. Yeah, right. If I close it, you can see it's actually touching the steel right there. And that is not good. As you can see, it should not touch the steel. And here it does. Look, it touches the steel. So the top cover is definitely bent. And as you can see in the video, the, the, the buttstock is also bending a lot. It was like pushed into the ground and that's why it's completely loose right now. And of course the strap broke. So yeah, one thing for sure, this field was full of mines. It would have been blown away 10,000 times already. And apparently, because they damaged it, it's my fault. Yeah, I can't believe it. Some people just do not care. Only think about themselves and are extremely stupid. They even said to me, is it airsoft? No, it's not airsoft. It's an MG42, an original MG42 from the Second World War worth a couple thousands of euros, okay? It has matching numbers. And another thing that they said to me, which shows that they, they really don't think straight, is put another top cover on top of it. Seriously, first of all, where can I find a new top cover? An original top cover. Second of all, it's an original MG42. It has matching numbers. If I'm gonna change the top cover, the value of the weapon is going down. Also, you need papers to own a weapon like this. The number that's on the top cover has to match with the papers. I can't just change it, you know? Use your brain. And then they said, yeah, we have like a guy in our, our reenactment group who can maybe fix it. I was like, N not, not at this moment, because first I want, you know, I want to document exactly what is broken and stuff. So, and I had to go home. I already had to leave at that moment. I already said that as well. I said I had to go home. I still have to drive home. I still have to do a few things at home. I don't have time to, to get this weapon all checked out right now at this point. So I said, I can't do that right now. I just want to document what's broken because, you know, like I said before, if it's an insurance thing, you, w you want to keep it the way it is. You don't want to screw around with it. So that's what I did. And they acted like everything was going to be fine. And they said, oh, do you have it on camera? Oh, I'm so happy I got it on camera because they were hoping for sure that I didn't capture it on camera, but I got it on camera. Actually, I got it on two cameras. Too bad. They were in denial. And uh, the thing that made me the most mad was that they said that I was kind of making it up. It seemed like I was just lying to them. I literally got it on footage. And then they said, oh, it's because we, we were driving up the hill and then you cannot see. You can literally see on the footage that they did see it. And the moment that they actually hit the MG, they were driving straight. So no, that's, that's, that's not an excuse. I even have a couple witnesses who saw this happen. Um, so they wrote down their names and stuff. Anyway, the driver did not give me his details and the other person also did not. One person did. That was the person on top of the vehicle. Also, if you're driving a big vehicle like this, you have to drive slow. You have to drive slow and check. You have a responsibility when you're driving a vehicle like this, which is really dangerous with these big wheels and stuff. You have a responsibility to be sure everything is safe. Look around. Don't just drive like a maniac. But like I said, I had the details of this one person and we were going to contact each other on Messenger. He friended me on Facebook while we were there so we can contact each other on Messenger, right? There was also a person right there. This is a, an important person in this reenactment group, in this 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 American reenactment group. And I knew him from, from 
events before and stuff like that and you know so uh, I texted him when I was home and uh, I said like uh, he was there he was there as well he was one of the people actually who was pushing on the top cover as well I said to him like what happened and I showed him the footage and then the other person um, decided to uh, text me he was saying again that he offered like to get the weapon fixed and uh, they started saying to me that I refused that and guess what before I even had the chance to reply on this message he blocked me on Facebook first I saw his Facebook and I saw a lot of pictures of this day from that vehicle and he suddenly without any warning blocked me well if that is not clear evidence of a guilty person I don't know what it is because why would you block me why it Oh, that made me so mad because I actually checked with someone else's account and everyone could still see his Facebook except me. I was blocked. Why was I blocked? I was talking very respectfully. I wanted to just, you know, figure this out as adults, but they decided to act like little kids block me. Then I contacted the organization and they decided to read my messages, which were like, very long messages and just not reply one day two day three days read my messages don't reply so I was getting really frustrated and I, I, I said again please can you maybe uh, reply to my messages because you know it's kind of important because my MG42 is broken and they blocked me so can you maybe um, you know give me some details and then I got a very, I would say, aggressive message like, I only have two hands and I have to do this and blah, 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 blah. I was, I was, I was keeping my cool. I kept saying, I just want to figure this out as adults. I don't want to contact the police or anything. I just want to, you know, do this as normal people. Can we, can we please do that? Can we just figure this out? You know, it, what's broken can be fixed, maybe. All you have to do is, is pay for the costs maybe you know we could have figured it out like that but no I've been sending a lot of messages and I just right now I, I don't know exactly what I said anymore and I don't know exactly what they said anymore but uh, long story short I know exactly who the people on the M20 are I know their names I know what group they are from I also have the license plate of this vehicle and actually contacted a former uh, lawyer but he's saying it's gonna be really hard to start a case in Belgium. It's probably gonna take a couple of years before it's even gonna be, you know, done. And it's gonna cost you a lot of money to actually start a case and, and, and win it and stuff like that. So I have all the evidence. It's their fault. I've showed the footage to a lot of people, different reenactors. They can just get away with it. I cannot believe it. It is absolutely disgusting. I actually went to a, uh, a gun, gun store. They can probably fix it. I will take the MG42 there and show them. Um, but it will be on my own costs. It is so disgusting that people like that, who definitely made a mistake, can just get away with it. They just are too immature to just admit that they were wrong. And, you know, if they did that, every, everything would have been solved. But no, they decided to be There's probably a lot more that I want to say, but right now, at this moment, I just cannot really think straight. Um, because I'm making myself really mad again. But long story short, this organization of this event is horrible. I'm never gonna go there again. I lost all my respect for this place, this, this, this event. Just a fun fact, nothing even actually ever happened in Borlo during the Second World War. So I wanna warn you, if you wanna go to the Borlo event in Belgium there might be people driving over your stuff and they will get away with it so think twice before you go there and actually previous time when I was there there was also someone from the same reenactment group who decided to rip apart my tunic because he was too much in the battle I think or something and he decided to just completely pull my tunic off and all the buttons broke that's something else that happened there actually so pretty funny right pretty big coincidence also by the way these people on this M20 they're like the most farbiest people I've ever seen. Really bad impressions. It's been a while back right now, actually, since this happened. Uh, so I don't know all the text messages anymore completely because it, it's been a lot that I've been seeing and stuff. So I have to read them over and over again because I got screenshots of everything. Also from the Facebook pages. So I got a lot of evidence. Oh yeah, actually, I, I asked in a very friendly way if they could maybe give me the details of the, uh, the owner of the vehicle because I wanted to contact the owner of the vehicle. Uh, but they refused to give me any details. I actually think that this vehicle is not even road legal because you need, you know, 
some papers to drive around with this thing. I'm not even sure they, they have the right papers for it, so maybe that's one of the reasons that they're not giving me any details. I don't know. I do have the license plate, though, but, you know, the problem is it's Belgium. It's hard, you know. Like I said, I talked to a former lawyer, and he's saying it's really hard. Uh, he also contacted another former lawyer, and they're saying it's, you know, it's not easy to start a case in Belgium, so. So, uh, I feel like I definitely did not explain enough why it's their fault and stuff like that. That's why I'm thinking about making another part to show you exactly how it happened and, you know, what we said to each other and stuff like that and how the communication was and blah, 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 blah. So I think I'm actually gonna make a separate video about this thing that occurred. You've officially been warned, so if you see an M20 in Belgium somewhere, be careful. This is actually where I'm going to end this video. Um, usually I'm not here. Usually I'm in my collector's room, but right now I'm in the studio. Why? I don't know. Anyway, it's not really a happy ending this time, but I still hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did like the video, please leave a like and a comment. I would really appreciate that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.